Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. A study suggests that price volatility of commodities like food, oil, stuff we use every day, a lot of that price volatility is coming because of the amount of speculation involved in the commodities markets. Yes, there's more demand from India and China. Yes, natural events like the drought in the western United States plays a role. But speculators, financialization of the commodity market is a major factor in this price volatility. And according to our next guest, something should be done about it. Now joining us from Geneva is Nicholas Merstra. He's an economic affairs officer in UNCTAD, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. And he works in the area of financialization and commodity markets. Thanks for joining us, Nicholas. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. So, Nicholas, let's, let's just start with the basic statistic that 85% uh, now of, people, of the money involved in uh, hedge funds and, future, and hedging in the future markets is uh, speculator financialized fi finance money. About 25% of that is actual end user. So, uh, quickly, why, why is that a problem? And then we'll talk about what can be done about it. The problem with the, the financialization of commodity market um, is that, I mean, if you have, a, if you have now a, a very large part of the participants that are financial uh, investors or speculators, no matter you, how you want to call them, uh, the problem is that, I mean, those, this presence may in fact uh, destabilize the price formation on commodity market and create somehow the, the wrong signal uh, for the, the people that are inter really interested in, or physically interested in, in those markets. So it might uh, create the wrong signal for the, the producer, uh, prevent them to, uh, to embark into, into new uh, infrastructure projects, and um, uh, ultimately, I mean, uh, this growing volatility might, uh, I mean, destabilize the, those markets. And, and that's, that's the, 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 key, uh, the key issue there. And um, when you have, I mean, the prices of commodity that no longer reflect, I mean, their, their fundamentals, uh, yeah, that creates uh, some lots of uncertainty, sorry, on those markets. And um, yeah, it's not, uh, I mean, the way the, uh, I mean, a market should, uh, should function. And, and part of what you looked at is these high frequency traders that come in for short term bets, sometimes a matter of seconds, sometimes a little longer but massive amounts of money coming in and coming out of the commodity markets. And, and your point is that this idea that of what they call price discovery, that people should have some idea of the fundamentals so they can have some sense of where price is going. That's all distorted because of this, 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 kind, this kind of financialization and particularly the high, what some people call cheetahs, the high frequency traders. Yeah, I mean, the problem is that if you have people, I mean, somehow, who respond, I mean, or who act on commodity market based on, I mean, the, on, on what is, I mean, at the end, uh, just a portfolio strategy, um, uh, an investment portfolio strategy, uh, cr clearly, I mean, it can, I mean, send the market into the, the wrong direction. That can be either the result of algorit algorithm uh, traded at very high uh, frequencies, but it can also be, I mean, just uh, I mean, a pension fund uh, investing uh, on, on sugar um, to diversify its portfolios, and, and this will somehow um, have an impact on the, um, on the price formation uh, on those markets. And when you have actors that don't have any specific interest in the, in the, um, I mean, in the physical uh, product. I was told by some, someone who knows uh, that Goldman Sachs apparently has more than 500 people that do nothing but sit there and write algorithms for a high frequency trading. So it's, it's a massive operation, this. So, so if, if this kind of trading is distorting prices, introducing volatility, and, and more often than not, raising prices for consumers, then what should be done about it? Yeah, I mean, clearly, I mean, the first thing is to, I mean, to increase uh, uh, the transparency on the, the, fin on the fi financial um, commodity market. So who are the financial, uh, uh, who are somehow the, the key players um, to look at the, I mean, the, pos the position uh, and to have information about the position of, I mean, significant uh, market uh, participant, uh, at least for the regulator, so he can then, um, I mean, summarize this information and, and give more uh, and give it to the, to the public. 
So that's one thing that, that needs to be done. I mean, it's clearly to, to increase the, the transparencies. Uh, the other thing is to, to tighten the, the regulation of those, uh, those financial actors. Um, I mean, here we can think about uh, several measures to ban certain types of uh, investment vehicle on, uh, on, uh, on commodities uh, market. Uh, we can also, I mean, ban proprietary uh, trading by financial firms that are also involved in, in uh, hedging somehow the position of their client because here you have, a, I mean, uh, an asymmetry of information uh, problem. Um, I mean, if we are convinced that um, high-frequency uh, traders and uh, financial investors um, are, I mean, not um, providing a, a good uh, input for the for the for those for this system, you can also, I mean, think about the the creation of a financial tax tax on financial transaction. Yeah, the people that are supporting the financial transaction tax. Uh, the nurses are calling it the Robin Hood tax. Uh, th that's one of their arguments, that, that this will have a beneficial effect in slowing down these high-frequency traders because they, they operate on such small margins with a lot of money, but if you tax it, it takes away some of the incentive for doing it. Exactly, yeah. So that's the, that's the same idea that was somehow uh, at the beginning uh, uh, promoted for the, for the currency market that are also very uh, volatile. Um, but that, I mean, this kind of mechanism can also be established on a, on commodity market, and I mean, ultimately, if none of those uh, solutions are satisfactory, you can also I mean think about uh, a direct intervention from the surveillance market authorities. And uh, I mean, in the case of the the currency market, for instance, I mean, the the Swiss national banks at at, at some point I mean decided to intervene and to say, okay, I mean. Starting from now, the, the Swiss francs will no longer appreciate uh, against the euro because it's, uh, it's completely against the, 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 the fundamentals. And um, I mean, we can I mean, think again, uh, think also uh, about the same type of, uh, of intervention from the, the surveillance market uh, authorities uh, with a direct intervention. So you're talking about something, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be the Fed, but something with the, the actual wherewithal to bet against bubbles. If, you see, if they would see a bubble being formed because of this kind of uh, speculative trading, they would actually just bet against it in order to stop the bubble from forming. Of course, it would it would not be the Fed. I mean, uh, that has to be uh, done uh, internationally, and uh, co it has to be uh, coordinated. Uh, so, I mean, right now, I don't know. I mean, who somehow, what will be somehow the the specific uh, regulatory body who will implement that? But uh, I mean, the, if there is the political uh, willingness to 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 do so, I mean that's something that is uh, entire, entirely and feasible. That, and of course, that's the big issue: is that there seems to be no political willingness for reining in finance, in, in the sense that finance has such political power now in all the main capitals. Uh, of, of the world, that uh, any regulation gets so watered down. That, that, I mean, isn't that the underlying issue here? Oh, sure. But I mean, that's uh, I mean why we are continuing. I mean, uh, our research and and uh, somehow uh, I mean pushing uh, for those ideas. I, we know that uh, you have many uh, I mean interests that uh, I mean and m many actors who don't want any any regulation. But that's. Uh, like in other, many other places, and I mean, ultimately, um, we know that uh, I mean, uh, uh, the la the latest example of the financial crisis, I think, should convince us that the, I mean, no regulation uh, is ultimately uh, no, no good. One would think so, but about half of America that votes apparently is ready to vote for a president that wants less regulation, and of course, the current president talks about regulation, but didn't promote really that effective uh, a policy. I don't know the, the specific, all the specific issues regarding the, the, the U.S. Uh, economy, but uh, looking at Europe, I mean, it is clear that, um, <clears throat> I mean, s things are sl moving slowly. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, we, we would like them to move at a faster pace, but, um, well, uh, so we are continuing uh, our work. In the next year or two, people are predicting a major rise in food prices, so perhaps there'll be more interest in this. Thanks very much for joining us, Nicholas. Well, it was my pleasure, and thanks again for, for your time. Yeah. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.